What's up guys? In this video, what I wanna do is tackle three easy combining rational expressions that you need to know before we get on to more difficult problems, as well as some initial pitfalls and mistakes that students make when we first start to encounter how to combine rational expressions. Let's go and take a look at this first example. And you can see that we have variables in the denominator, right? That's the idea of combining rational expressions. Now I'm using the word rational expressions because we have variables here. But if you think about it, rational expressions is really just fractions. But if you think about it, that's usually why students don't like rational expressions because they don't like fractions, which I get because I remember not liking fractions as well. They usually take a little bit more time and sometimes they can just be confusing to work with. So in this first example, I just want to do a quick little review of what we need to do when we are adding and subtracting fractions. Now I'm just going to pick a random problem here on the left-hand side, just so we can kind of like have a basic understanding of what we're trying to do. So let's just say I have the fraction as a five over one plus a seven over three. Now I might say five over one, that could be written as five. And yes, you're correct. But again, all whole numbers can be written as a fraction. So let's just say we have this, right? We're trying to add five over one plus seven over three. Now, the main thing that we need to take away with adding and subtracting fractions is you have to have that common denominator. That means that the denominator for both of these fractions has to be exactly the same. So what we need to do to achieve that is just multiply by three on the left-hand side in the denominator, as well as in the numerator. Then what we're gonna attain is a new fraction, 15 over three, which again, was equivalent to five over one, right? Because if you just now divide by three on the top and the bottom, you get a five over one or five, or you could just say, how many times is three divided into 15? Five times. So we're not changing the value of the fraction. We're just changing the form, right? Which we call an equivalent fraction. Then we're going to add that to a seven thirds. Now you can see they're both being divided by that same number. So now I can just add 15 plus seven is going to be a 22, but we're going to keep the denominator being exactly the same. So we're only applying the operation to the numerator once we have our common denominator and we're going to leave the denominator exactly the same. Now, in this case, we're dealing with X's, right? Rather than just numbers, but that's okay. So what we're simply going to do again is we recognize that if I want to get a common denominator, these are me to do that. It's just multiply by three on the left-hand side. Now, again, I want to make sure I multiply the three on the top as well as on the bottom to produce my equivalent fraction. So therefore now, I'm going to have a 15 over a 3x plus a 7 over a 3x. And now I have my common denominator and I can just go and apply the numerators or the operation to the numerator, which is going to be a 22 over a 3x. Now, obviously, if you can always simplify something, then, you know, I always recommend to go ahead and do it. But in this case, this is going to be as further simplified as we can get. Now, in this next example, you can see we both have x's here, but then we have this plus 5. So one of the big common mistakes that students will do if they really kind of struggle with understanding fractions is they'll maybe say, well, why don't we just add a 5 to both sides? And now they're the same. But unfortunately, that's not going to work. Adding a 5 on the top and the bottom is not going to produce what we call equivalent fractions. Going back to that original fraction that I had, which was a 5 over 1 plus a 7 thirds, what you notice is I didn't add a two to the top and bottom, right? Don't try to add a number to a fraction to be able to get equivalent equations. We have to use multiplication. So what am I going to add to an X that's going to give me an X plus five? Here's where the idea of the least common multiple is going to play. What we need to be able to do is find the least common multiple of our denominators, which we call the least common denominator for X and X plus five. Now, when we're dealing with polynomials, it can be pretty confusing. So let's go back and again, look at some fractions here and just try to understand how would we find the least common multiple. So if I had a fraction like one third, plus a one fourth, right? And I wanted to find the common denominator. I can't add a one to the three, right? I already hopefully showed you that, or hopefully you understand that we cannot do that. That's not gonna produce an equivalent fraction. And again, let's just see if I did. Two fourths, right? If I were to add a one to the denominator and the numerator, two fourths is not equivalent to one third, right? So you can't do that. So when I multiplied by a five on top and bottom, that did produce an equivalent fraction. But if you add on the top and bottom, that will not do it. So do not do that. All right, how am I going to find the least common denominator of one third plus one fourth? Like what exactly do I need to do? So what we need to do is we need to find the smallest number that they both divide into. The long way to do that is just to start listing out multiples of your number. So three, three, six, nine, you know, 12, 15, 18, and then start doing it for four. So we could say four, eight, 12, 16. And immediately I noticed that the smallest number that is a multiple of three and four is going to be a 12. That is our least common multiple. And in this example is going to be our least common denominator. So what we want to do is say, well, what number do I need to multiply? Not add. What number do I need to multiply then to be able to get a 12? One third. So I'll multiply by four on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, plus a one over four. So I'll multiply by three on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Therefore, I'm gonna be left with a four over 12 plus a three over 12. Now you can see they have a common denominator and therefore I can apply my operation to my numerators and that's gonna be a seven twelfths. So here's where the problem gets a little confusing for students because they say, well, what are the multiples of X? What are the multiples of X plus five, right? It's kind of confusing here. Well, rather than trying to list like the multiples of X and X plus five, I want you to kind of recognize something like, how did we get to 12? The way that we got to 12 was basically 
taking our denominators and multiplying them, right? If you go back over here, look at three times four was 12 and four times three was 12. So a quick, easy way to find a common multiple, not always the least common multiple that will come up in a later video, but at least a way to find a common multiple is just to multiply the products. In this case, that's exactly what my LCD is going to be. My LCD is just going to be the product of my two multiples. And here's a quick little tip. When there's no simplifying your denominators, the LCD is always just going to be a product of your denominators. So in this case, I'll take an X times an X plus five. I'm just going to leave it as it is at this point. So I can find the least common denominator on the left and the right hand side. Now on the left hand side, I already have an X. So therefore to obtain this, I just need to multiply by an X plus five on the top as well as on the denominator. And then over here, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by X. Now I want you to understand you're multiplying by an X to the X plus five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in parentheses. All right. So it's very important just to do that whenever you have an expression, because you want to make sure that you're going to be applying the distributive property correctly. So I can just put this in parentheses too. just, you know, I'm inserting it in. So it's a good way for me to remember what exactly I'm doing. Now what I need to do is kind of simplify these two expressions. X plus five times one is just going to be an X plus five. So that is pretty simple. And then over here, you, it doesn't really matter if it's three times four or four times three, right? So it doesn't matter the order. I'm just going to write this as an X times an X plus five. Then over here, I'm going to have a minus. Now five times X is just going to be a five X. And then over here, again, I'll just rewrite this as an X times an X plus five. Now, what I want you to do is to understand that like, just like I had over here, now that I have the common denominator is exactly the same. Now I can just apply the operations to my numerator. So what I can do is I can just rewrite this as one big fraction. So X plus five minus a five X all over my common denominator of an X plus an X plus five. Now, again, you can distribute this if you want to. A lot of times we just leave it in a simplified form. Now there's only thing I can subtract here is the X minus the five X, right? So the only thing operation I can do here when doing that, that's going to give me a negative four X. So therefore my final answer is going to be a negative four X plus five, all divided by an X times an X plus five. All right, now let's go and take a look at one last example where again, a students make mistakes time and time again. So they see the two X plus one and they see the X plus one. They say, all right, I have an X plus one over here and a two X plus one over here. Now, Ms. McLogan said, I need to multiply, right? I can't add or subtract. So why don't I just multiply by two on the top? It's a great idea, but unfortunately you can't just multiply the two times the X because again, whenever you have an expression, right? You have to would multiply the two times both of these terms. And if you were to multiply the two times both of those terms, that would give you a 2x plus 2, right? Because if you didn't distribute it, then you would not produce an equivalent equation. So unfortunately, multiplying by 2 just to the x is not going to work. And multiplying by 2 times the x plus the 1 is not going to give you a common denominator. So that is not going to work as well. So again, we come up to this idea of we have two separate denominators, right? I just can't multiply one denominator by a number. So what exactly am I going to do? Well, I need to find the LCD. And again, the quickest and easiest and fastest way to be able to find the LCD when you cannot simplify your denominators is just to multiply them. So therefore, in this example, the LCD is just going to be a 2x plus 1 times an x plus 1. Okay, so now to obtain the LCD for both of these equations, what I'm simply going to do is on this left-hand side, I already have the 2x plus 1, so I just need to multiply by an x plus 1. And again, I'm using parentheses here. I want to make sure that you understand that you're going to multiply everything times x plus 1. Now, whenever you have an expression, it's a good idea to put those in parentheses as well. So the same thing over here. On this right-hand side, I have an x plus 1. Now, again, I need to multiply that by a 2x plus 1. And again, I'm going to use parentheses to make sure we're understanding we're multiplying this times this, right? So parentheses is extremely important. Then we're going to do a 2x plus 1. So now I have some numbers outside my parentheses, right? So what I need to do is apply distributive property, right? Whenever you have a number outside a parentheses that's multiplication, the distributive property tells you we need to multiply that number times both of those terms. You could definitely go and expand those if you wanted to. A lot of times when we want to simplify our answer, we want to have it in factored form. So a lot of times it's just best to leave it in its simplified form. When I multiply the numerator here on the left-hand side, I'm going to get a 5x plus 1. And then over here, plus on the right hand side, that's going to give me a 4x plus 2. Now again, remember, I created my common denominator, so I can just rewrite everything over my common denominator, which is going to be a x plus 1 times a 2x plus 1. Now I can combine my variables and I can combine my numbers, which is now going to leave me with a final answer of 9x plus 3 all over a common denominator of a x plus 1 over a 2x plus 1. Now, if you notice, you could simplify this example a little bit, right? You could factor out a 3 in the numerator and the denominator. So let's just go ahead and write out another simplified version, right? If I factored out a 3, that would leave me with a 3x plus 1 all over a x plus 1 
times a 2x plus one. It just pretends if your teacher wants you to be able to provide it in simplified form, that could be very helpful. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are some very basic problems that you need to know for combining rational expressions. Now, if you have a test or a quiz coming up and you need to pass it, in these next three examples, I want to cover three main examples that you need to know to be able to pass that test. So go and check out the next video I have for you here. Or if you just want more examples of rational expressions or notes that I provide to my students inside my courses, go ahead and check out the examples and resources I have for you down below. Cheers.